Welcome to the warm-up presented by the Blanchard Valley Health System. I'm Mark Coots, and today we're at Bluffton High School. And for the first time since Ronald Reagan was president, Dennis Lee, no longer the head coach, as he has retired and succeeded by Kyle Cut. Now, no stranger to Bluffton. You were on Coach Lee's staff this past season, and you went to Bluffton University. Even though you were born in Northeast Ohio, you say Bluffton's now your second home. Yes, sir. Yep. I'm very familiar with the area. Um, it has a lot of sentimental value for me. You know, I kind of this is where I wanted to, you know, figure out who I was and what I wanted to do. And met my wife here in school and proposed to her here in school. And we were married actually here in Bluffton. So it's uh, like I said, it's like second home. So. You have head coaching experience at Edgerton. You've been an assistant at a couple different places. A wealth of experience. Is that what you're kind of you see the past decade or so for you that? going to pay off at here at Bluffton? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I've been really fortunate. You know, I've, I've worked with a lot of really good coaches and, um, you know, we've, I've had a lot of good experience, you know, in spite of my age. And, uh, you know, to me, this is just like icing on the cake. You know, I get to be in a, in a town that I love and um, I get to use all the skills and all the knowledge that, you know, was, was passed on to me and, and I learned. So I'm excited to be here. You look back on the 2013 season, Pirates went six and four, four and three in the NWC. Lost to Crestview by just one point. Lost to LCC by three points. So very easily could have been an eight and two season. Played two playoff teams really tough. Is that some momentum you can build off from last year? Yeah, I think our kids are pretty confident. You know, they know that um, you know when we play relaxed and, and we do what we do. You know, we can play with just about anybody. We just got to make sure that you know we keep focusing on the little things. Uh, one of the things that we talk about a lot is is how uh, little things make the big things happen. So we have a, a, an attention to detail and we try to focus on, you know, whether it's route depth or, or technique or footwork or whatever it is. You know, we always try to pay attention to those details. Very strong defensive team last year. Unfortunately, some of those key defensive players have graduated. What's the defense looking like this year? Uh, the defense is a little bit different. Um, last year we were more of a, a three down look and, you know, now we're getting back to more of a traditional um, four three look. And, um, we've got a lot of guys coming back that, that have experience on that defense. And, and I think what we do this year, um, it, it fits our personnel very well. And uh, Coach Miller's done a really good job of getting our kids excited to play defense. And, um, you know, a lot of the same um, concepts and, and things are still there. So it's just, you know, a little bit of tweaking here and there. So Offensively, quite a bit coming back, including Mitchell Alt, your junior quarterback. And, and plus, you've got Robbie Stratton coming back and a lot of speed. We saw the great speed Bluffton track team had last year. A lot of those kids are playing football for you now. Oh, yeah, they're, they're great kids. Um, you know, Bluffton is a town where you're always going to find those skill kids who can do things. And, and these kids really care about football and they love football. And, um, you know, the, the great thing about our offense is we can be extremely versatile. You know, we can be in under center stuff, we can be in shotgun, we can condense, we can spread out. I mean, it's. It's really a good thing to have all those athletes. In college, you played wide receiver. Do you put more of an emphasis coaching-wise on the offensive side of the ball then? Uh, yeah, I'm, <laughs> you can't get me excited about defense. <laughs> I, I, I like it, I respect it, but my heart is, is on the offensive side of the ball. Um, I, I tend to focus on you know that kind of stuff. Uh, I coach the quarterbacks, and you know we've got just about two coaches per position everywhere else, so we're, we're doing really well in terms of getting stuff going. So. How's the team looking in terms of numbers this year? Uh, we're at about high 40s, you know, maybe 50, mm -hmm. uh, give or take a guy here or there. Um, a lot of a uh, lot of experience in the, the top two grades, and then we have a little bit of a, a down cycle with our, our sophomore class. There's just not a lot of guys, and then um, our freshmen this past year, as eighth graders, they won the NWC, and um, you know they're a really good class, and there's good numbers there, so. We're excited. We kind of have a good momentum going in the right direction right now. So Certainly Coach Lee built a solid foundation, a solid program here at Bluffton. As you take over as head coach, what are the things that you tweaked? What have you altered from what Coach Lee has done? Or, or has it been a major renovation? Uh, you know, it's not a major renovation. You know, don't get, don't get it twisted. I mean, this program's not broken by any mm -hmm, means. Absolutely. Um, you know, we have, uh, we have some things that I kept, you know, to try to keep consistency in terminology, but there's some things that just have to be different. Uh, I think that the way practices are run are a little bit different. You know, we have a, a clock that goes off every five minutes, and it's really fast-paced and up-tempo. And I was joking around with the kids the other day. I was at Burger King, and, you know, the lady was taking a long time, and I was <laughs> like, come on, let's go, tempo, you know. So um, we try to really push it and, and go that way with it. So. Obviously, if you're going to try and play up-tempo, it goes back to conditioning, goes back to what you do in June and July. Did you have to put a, an emphasis then on the conditioning? Uh, I mean, we're not, we're not Chip Kelly, you know, Oregon, <laughs> Philadelphia Eagles fast, but, I mean, we just try to get practice practice fast so we can get a lot in and get a lot done but you know the kids did a great job we lifted um, four days a week in the off season we ran and you know the kid, they could come either before school or after school and you know again I mean some of these kids are three sport athletes and they're making the, the sacrifices and coming at you know five six o'clock in the morning and getting stuff done and you know it's a, a tribute to them not really me. 
or anything else. Opener this season up the road to Corey Rawson, a great rivalry, a new head coach there for the Fighting Hornets. Seems like there's been a little bit of a, some infusion of enthusiasm with both programs. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, when I was in school, both programs were, you know, perennial playoff teams back when I was in college. And, um, you know, we're both kind of getting positive things going, and uh, hopefully we can get, you know, that rivalry renewed a little bit. Eight times Bluffton has made the postseason, but the last time was 10 years ago, 2004. How do you get it into the players' mindsets that they're good enough to make it to Week 11? Uh, I think it was just we had to have some confidence early on. You know, we had a, a team camp at Ohio Northern this year back in the end of June, and, you know, we, we spent more time together growing as a team, and, you know, we spent time doing team bonding activities and, you know, really getting to know each other and, and like each other and respect each other, and uh, that really helped. You know, I think our team chemistry is one of our biggest strengths right now. Um, but, uh, you know, to get things going, you know, we had to have that success early on and we were able to scrimmage uh, OG in 7-on-7 seven seven in June and, you know, then we had a lot of success in 7-on-7s seven this, this summer and, you know, they're kind of seeing it. They see the writing on the wall that, you know, when we're relaxed and we do what we do, we can play with just about anybody. So. You guys, just on the outside of that three-way tie for first place in the NWC last year, what do you need to do to, to make that move up to the, the top couple spots in the league? Uh, you know, we don't have to do anything extraordinary. I mean, we just got to do what we do. We got to do the routine things and, and do it better than everybody else. And, you know, I mean, we, we're supposed to beat the teams we're supposed to beat and beat a couple that we're not supposed to beat, you know. And, and I think that if we can stay healthy and do things the right way, we, we can be in contention. All right. Thank you very much, Coach Kyle Cut. Now from Bluffton Pirates and the nautical theme. A lot of fruit. They don't want to have scurvy with the Pirates as the Blanchard Valley Health System certainly can take care of that. I need to take a break here on the warm up. We come back more from Bluffton and WSA. Welcome back to the warm-up here in Bluffton. Warm-up presented by Blanchard Valley Health Systems. Joined now by three Pirates. Got senior Austin Bricker to my left, wide receiver cornerback. In the middle is junior Mitchell Alt. Mitchell Alt. He is the quarterback and middle linebacker. And on the end is the senior Clay Wilson running back and safety. Austin, we'll start with you. New head coach, Kyle Cutnaw. What have you seen out of the new head coach, and what are some of the changes from Coach Lee, who was here for a long time, obviously? Yeah. Um, he's... He's very excited about what's coming up with this season, and uh, he's into it. Um, he just he gets us going. He knows how to get us going. And obviously, we were sad to see Coach Lee go, and we're excited about what's up to come. Mitchell, this is your second season starting at the quarterback position, and you're just a junior. What did you take from that experience as a sophomore? Um, you know, just like reading, reading coverages and uh, knowing what to do uh, when the clock's ticking and, you know, uh, reps – make make you better in uh, tight moments and tough moments so that just that helps get me the reps should have a good junior season coming up clay i just heard the horn go off it goes off every five minutes coach cutting says what does that yep. mean um it means switch what you're doing so stop what you're doing and go to the next part of practice it it really helps with the flow of practice and it keeps everything going and do you like that fast pace yeah yeah we we definitely like it it helps keep us going and practice goes by a lot quicker Austin, coach talked about attention to detail. How important yep. is that in turning that detail into success in the NWC? Um, just with everything we do, I mean, if we pay attention and do the little things right, the big things will happen. And Mitchell, you guys start the NWC schedule with a home game against Delphus Jefferson, then on the road to Crestview, and then home to Ada. Three tough opponents who all, you lost to them all last year, and they were all playoff teams. So. What are you hoping to get out of the beginning of the NWC schedule? You're going to learn a lot about your team pretty early on. Right. Uh, I just I look for us to uh, compete with them, and if we want to be a playoff team, we need to be able to compete, and we need to be able to win. So that's what we plan on doing. And Clay, on the defensive side of the ball, you play safety. Yep. Transitioning to a 4-3, what have you seen out of the defense and out of the defense so far, and, and do you like the direction it's headed? Um, the defense so far, I think we move a lot faster than we did last year. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice change for us. It wasn't too hard of a transition, and I think we'll be pretty decent on the defensive side. Pirates working hard here in camp. Time for a break on the warm-up presented by Blanchard Valley Health Systems. When we come back, three more Pirates will take a seat with me here. Third down of this warm-up, 
presented by Blanchard Valley Health Systems from Bluffton. Three more seniors. Now Robbie Stratton to my left, wide receiver safety in the middle is Brady Parkins. He's on the line, right tackle and D end. Levi Kistler on the outside there, tight end and linebacker. Robbie, we'll start with you. There it goes, that horn. You're missing another five, another <laughs> chance to change your location. How do you like the up, up the uh, tempo and the upbeat nature of camp so far? Um, it's it's definitely a change, but um, you know, it's a it keeps us organized and there's we get a lot more done, I think. Brady, what is rage in the cage? Uh, it's like a wrestling condition type of thing. It's real fun. Is it something you look forward to? Sounds like you might get some of that action later yeah, today. Yeah, I like it a lot. <laughs> we hear that coach. He likes it a lot. Levi. Yeah, to team camp at ONU earlier in the summer. What did you get out of that, being together with all the guys? Um, well, we just got closer as a team, and we started putting in our offense. So we already have our whole offense in, and it's only the fifth day of two days, and our defense is getting quicker every day as we go. Robbie, what about this senior class? You guys are replacing a pretty solid senior class from last year. You guys up for the task? Oh, uh, Definitely. I mean, we've been a close class ever since third grade and midget since we started out, and we have a majority of the kids still playing, and I think we had quite a few starters that are returning from the junior class last year, so yeah, we're pretty excited this year. Brady, you guys played in a lot of close games last year. Coach <laughs> talked about it. What do you take away from being in such tight games and not coming out on the right end? Um, well, we learn a lot about just how we can improve in the late minutes of those games and how we can turn out with a win the next time. Yeah, you'll be ready this season. Levi, the tight end position on offense, what have you seen out of your quarterback Mitchell Alt heading into his junior season and early on in camp here? Um, I've just noticed how his accuracy is a lot better this year and he's throwing the ball a lot harder and just overall he's a lot better. Robbie, any games you're looking forward to in conference this season? Um, Particular rival maybe? Um, definitely Grove. I mean that's always been a rivalry game but I think the, the Crespi game that's the one we're going to focus on a lot this year. Heading to Crestview, that'll be in week five. Brady, what about you? Any uh, NWC games you are have an eye on? Spencerville, definitely. It's always a battle on the line there, so it's a fun game to play in. And Levi, the opener against Corey Ross, and such an important part of the season, get out on, a, on the good foot. What do you hope to get out of that opener, and, and are you ready to go right now? Seems like this team is amped and, and ready to go. Yeah, I just think we're ready to see where our team is at and the potential we have for this season. Well, thanks for sitting down with us. Best of luck this season. Thank you to all of our guests and Coach Kutnaw. That does it on this edition of The Warm-Up, presented by Blanchard Valley Health Systems. For Mark Kuntz, I'm Matt Finkel. We'll see you next time on WOSN.